So hello together, I'm Max and I will present today MapLibreRS, which is a cross-platform map renderer written in Rust. So imagine being able to fly from outer space to any place on Earth. This is kind of a groundbreaking idea, at least it was in the 90s. Um, so discovering the world through computers um, was really not common in the 90s. There was one application actually, which is called TerraVision, which predates Google Earth for yeah, around 10 years. Um, and this kind of was the first application which allowed you through, um, to navigate through the world digitally. So short disclaimer about myself, um, I am not an expert in geoinformatics, graphics programming or Rust, um, but I had a lot of free time. Right now it's been a little bit less. So let's talk about maps. So first of all, I want to shortly discuss what a vector map is, so we're all on the same page. Um, later I will present MapLibreRS. So this is a vector map. Um, it's a map of Paris. Um, and what we can do with vector maps is we can dynamically style them on the client. So the same map with a different style looks, for example, like this. Um, the same map can also look like this. Um, and this is very um, interesting, for example, if you're driving your car um, and it suddenly gets dark, then the navigation system can automatically switch to a night mode. Um, there are also raster maps, um, which have certain advent advantages, but also disadvantages. So vector tiles, vector maps are usually smaller in size. Um, you also experience, can experience a smooth zooming experience. So that means you can zoom in without steps. Um, they allow for powerful customization, simple customization on the client side. Um, of course, this requires to have a powerful machine um, on the client side. Um, this maybe have, has been a problem 20 years ago, but nowadays every one of us has such a powerful machine in their pockets. So raster tiles on the other hand um, are for example required for satellite imagery. So if you want to display satellite images then of course you cannot use this cartoony style um, of maps. Um, with raster tiles you have, a, have very low requirements on the end users. So the hardware can be very minimalistic. Um, raster, raster maps in general are bigger than vector maps. So the idea behind this map rendering is, is that you split up the world into tiles. Um, without doing this, um, the data set would just be too huge to load all at the same time. So what we have to do is we have to split it up. Um, so in mapping, we usually start with data, which is defined according to some um, uh, coordinate system. And we project this data onto a flat surface. So this, of course, is not lossless, but that's the way we're doing it. So um, those the 2D surface can then be tiled up into squares, which we call tiles. And according to the zoom level, we have more detail or less detail. So for example, the most simple representation of the world is at zoom level zero, where we have one tile, which represents the whole world in a simplified version. If we go one zoom level further, um, we already have four tiles, so that's two to the power of one. Um, and by zooming in further and further, the amount of tiles um, grows exponentially. But of course, you don't, on a further zoom level, you don't want to show everything, but only a small portion. So now I want to present you MapLibre. Um, so there have been certain, or I kind of identified a few problems which I think are present today. Um, 
and MapLibreRS proposes kind of a solution to them. So most map renderers nowadays have multiple code bases. Um, most of them have one code base for the web, which is, which is usually written in JavaScript or TypeScript, um, and a C, C++ code base, which targets mobile environments. With MapLibreRS, we only have a single code base for browsers, mobile, and desktop. Uh, licensing is sometimes a little bit difficult with mapping, mapping map renderers. Uh, MapLibreRS tries to be a true free and open source solution um, with a permissive MIT license. Um, in my opinion, the state of the art for maps has not changed a lot in the recent years, especially in the open source world. Um, so with MapLibreRS, we have a new project without technic technical depth, uh, without a legacy code base, and we can easily try out new solutions, new ideas. So all of this is made possible by WebGPU, with a th which is a cross-platform 3D graphics API. Um, it's modern, um, it primarily targets the browser, but it can also target other platforms. Um, I think it will be stabilized around 2025. So, that, so it, currently it's a working draft by the w, W3C. Um, but sooner or later it will become stable in the browsers, hopefully. So with MapLibreRS, we kind of support 20 years of graphics. So how do we do this? Um, the excellent WGPU library basically solves this problem for us. Um, we are using Rust and WebAssembly in order to reach browsers. So WGPU basically allows us to reach all of those low-level graphics APIs. For example, OpenGL, which is important for, my, for mobile platforms, um, Metal, which is important for iOS and macOS, uh, DirectX, which, which is essential for Windows support, um, Vulkan, which is especially popular in Linux, um, and of course WebGL, which is essential for supporting browsers of today, and WebGPU, which is important for supporting browsers of the future. So this is roughly the architecture of MapLibreRS. Um, we are using WGPU, um, and we are producing different binaries, basically, for different target platforms. So we, we, are, have, we have one target, which, which is for native Rust applications, for example, on Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. Um, we have a WebAssembly target, which allows MapLibreRS to run in browsers. Um, we also can reach non-web applications with, with a WebAssembly target by choosing a WebAssembly runtime, which runs outside of the browser. Um, in order to reach all of those low-level APIs, we can either go through a hardware abstraction layer if needed, or directly go to WebGPU. So, for example, if you're running MapLibreRS in a browser today, you're actually going through a, through a hardware abstraction layer, which is a translation layer, kind of. It translates the API calls to other libraries, um, and that way you can reach WebGL. So why Rust? Is it only because it's a popular language, it's the most loved one language? Um, actually, not, not only because of that. So Rust is a systems programming language, um, which is kind of good for graphics programming because you want low-level access to hardware. Um, Rust also has outstanding support for WebAssembly, which is nice for browser support. Rust also has support for ato Atomics, shared memory and multi-threading, not only on desktop, but also on browsers. There's also a major WebGPU implementation, which is written in Rust, the so-called WGPU library, um, and this library will also power WebGPU support within Firefox. 
So this brings us to our next question. Why WebGPU? Why is it so special? So WebGPU GPU has a modern API, which also allows us to easily target the Metal API of Apple. Um, I will talk more about this later. So essentially WebGPU allows us to run our apps on Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, Windows, and in a browser. So we can reach basically all major platforms. So why is WebGPU a game changer? In order to understand this, I've drawn a quick or small um, timeline of graphics APIs. So basically there are two kinds of graphics APIs nowadays. There are the classical ones and there are the low, there are the low overhead ones. So OpenGL2, OpenGL ES2, um, this, those are basically the, li the libraries or the APIs which WebGL is based on. Um, around 2014, Apple released their Metal API, later DirectX was released, Vulkan was released, um, and in 2021 the work on WebGPU started, or took off. Um, so WebGL2 is still kind of a classical graphics API. Um, it's not a low overhead one, it still follows the same style like OpenGL2. So why is this important now? So Apple has deprecated the classical graphics APIs basically. So they've deprecated OpenGL support on their current um, iOS devices. And that means in order to continue using OpenGL, you need to introduce a compatibility layer which translates from OpenGL to Metal. This situation is not ideal, it's far from ideal. So on the one hand, of course, it reduces performance, but on the other hand, the style in which the GPU is programmed is also fundamentally different. So by building on top of the classical APIs, um, you're kind of not that future proven than by building on top of these new low overhead graphics APIs. So that's basically the reason why it's beneficial to target these low overhead graphics APIs instead of going with OpenGL. So now it's time for a quick demonstration. Let me quickly switch over to the demonstration. So this is Mablibre RS. It's running smoothly at 60 FPS. Um, it also runs on all major platforms with the same code, um, which means that features can be released um, at the same time for all of the platforms. Um, something which is also working is 3D support, so we can just tilt, zoom in, zoom out. Um, currently we're working on raster tiles. Um, we're also working on the extrusion of buildings. So that's basically 3D buildings. So the way we want to implement it in the first version is just to extrude these buildings. Um, as you can see, text is missing and a map without text is basically not worth much. Um, but it's a very challenging um, topic, especially in a browser. Something else which is missing is a per feature styling. So right now the properties of features do not influence the rendering. So big shout out to the contributors. There's, there has been contributions from the general community. Um, we also work closely with the MapLibre team and with the University of Applied Sciences and Arts. So there have been a lot of contributions from all sides so far. Um, quick series recommendation, if you haven't seen it already, the billion dollar code. Um, it's a mini series about a patent infringement between TerraVision and Google Earth. Um, it includes a lot of um, technical details which are quite correct. So if you're interested in maps rendering, then it's definitely worth a watch.
Um, maybe see you at Fosport G. Um, sadly, I couldn't attend State of the Map. Um, but on Fosport G, we will present um, a paper which kind of covers the state of the art of portable map renderers. Um, this has been a collaboration again between MapLibre and the University of Applied Sciences and Arts. So, thank you all for listening. Feel free to reach out to us or just try MapLibre out yourself. Um, we have a few communications channels on Matrix and Slack. Slack is where the MapLibre community meets. Right now, Matrix is where the Rust community is more active. Um, feel free to check out the GitHub repository. Um, we are also publishing blog posts regularly about the progress on the MapLibre blog. blog. Um, there's also a live demonstration which you can try it yourself, one which works in all major browsers and one which only works on the latest unstable version of browsers, so it only works sometimes if you're lucky. Um, so thank you all for listening and I'm happy for any questions.